Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 24th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see we've got some Gulf of Alaska action going on right now, but still some nice weather here across Pacific Northwest, unless you're in and around some of that surface smoke, but things should be getting better for some areas. And we'll take a look at what is to come as we go through next week, because we definitely have a pattern change coming. So you're going to want to enjoy these warmer temperatures and the lack of clouds and Try to get in your last rays of sun here before we make our inevitable change on in towards the fall and the winter seasons. Don't say that I didn't warn you here. So taking a look here at where we are this morning, you can see there are some low clouds out there straight away to Fuga, some of the northwest Washington coast up into the, the valleys there and some of the interior southwest BC, northwest Washington. There still is that smoke drifting around as well. And if we go through yesterday, there was that smoke, kind of put a little damper on things yesterday for those that had to smell it. But you can also see the Labor Mountain fire is right there still burning hot the hot spot is right there hopefully you can get some frontal systems in here over the next week or two to help put that thing out so taking a look at the high resolution rapid refresh you'll see as we go through the day today these fires flare up and they move off to the east across some of Kittitat, Kittitas and some of Chelan County as that smoke moves off to the west the Paragulch fire producing some amounts of smoke so you may still be smelling some of that action out there but you can kind of see how Seattle kind of clears out today however it takes longer for Portland as we go through the day today and some of the Lamette Valley in Oregon, Eastern Washington, still dealing with that smoke all the way up into British Columbia over the next few days. You can see that flare up again there on Thursday afternoon. Now, lightning strikes last 24 hours, nothing to speak of. And this weather station has a great lightning state, uh, system with it. Uh, ultrasonic anemometer and a haptic rain gauge as well. And it's not too late to get one of these and get it established at your place of residence before the crazy weather starts to roll in here towards Pacific Northwest. And you're going to want a weather station on your house, right? By the time you get towards the fall and the winter months, much more fun watching the weather with one on your house. I zoomed in here on Salem just for the heck of it today. You can kind of see all the weather stations out there. You can zoom around. And you can click on any one of these individual stations and get all kinds of great data if you uh, so desire. I mean, you see the Oregon coast out there as well. You see there's a Sea Rose Beach, Highway 101, all the way down towards Florence. So yeah, there's Dune City as well. So now taking a look at the European model, 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. We got that cut off over California. Still the ridging here for the Pacific Northwest, but we start to put a dent in that ridge as we go through the day tomorrow. Weak system moving through Western British Columbia. Take a look at that here more in a moment and then we get this next frontal system eventually showing up as we go through next week it's going to take a while but a pretty deep trough has been showing up in the model runs i'll show you more of that here with the extended forecast but you can see this big pattern change likely incoming pretty cold system there across the gulf of alaska and so this will have a little bit of wind potential with it as well and some heavier rains as we start to move on into portions of next week now looking at six hour precipitation here over you know we're looking through today of course we're not expecting anything but western bc starts to get some north of vancouver island as we go through the day tomorrow starts to impact portions of vancouver island mainly the northern half of vancouver island as we go through tomorrow night that system is weakening as it moves through but then we have a deeper low approaching just north the high wide towards south southeast alaska on the day friday starts to spread some precipitation here towards southwest bc vancouver island getting hit with some bigger amounts western british columbia but not a lot of that initially reaching seattle or portland as you can see but we could have a nice lenticular or so on the south side of this as well so any photographers might want to pay attention to the cascades over the next few days and then you can see this sagging south losing some of its punch but it's still bringing some decent amounts all the way as far south as southern vancouver island here in portions of southwest bc of the olympic peninsula and maybe even seattle getting a little bit of rainfall here on saturday we'll continue to watch that closely you see a pretty sharp cut off there right across seattle not really getting tacoma or olympia too much and then we scroll on in towards this weekend and then that trough really gets it's dug out over our coastal areas and starts to spread some more precipitation, potentially more widespread as we go on in towards next week with additional low pressure spinning around and swirling out there and maybe taking shots at the Pacific Northwest. Total precipitation in inches on the European Ensemble mean. This is basically close to what I just showed you, but you can see the big uh, differences here of what is coming for Western BC versus what is coming for Western Washington and Oregon. All some rainfall is coming. There's a very sharp cutoff as we go through the next few days and we'll be nailing down some of those 
details as we get a little bit closer. Also wanted to mention some of the winds here, especially as we go through the day on Thursday. Look at these winds start to rip on Thursday afternoon. Westerlies, northwesterlies off the Cascade to Washington, Oregon through the court straight on to Fuca as that system passes by to the north. And this could be enhancing some of the fire risk out there as well. I'll show you some graphics on that here, but that stays pretty windy as we go through Thursday night, and then we relax it a bit here as we go through Friday. And Spokane National Weather Service on top of things, as always, as of this morning, you can see fire weather watches across Chelan, Spokane. There's Pullman, Lewiston as well. Some gusty winds out there, low relative humidities, and newer ongoing fires could spread rapidly, so be careful out there. Uh, taking a look at the weather outlook again, this is Spokane. You can kind of see uh, Wednesday, Thursday, they do highlight that dry and breezy potential um, some, um, upper seventies to mid eighties temperature wise, uh, and Seattle, Tacoma, uh, air quality alert. They did issue one out here I and mean, there is some of that surface smoke drifting about. So uh, yeah. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you about that. You can smell it out there. A lot of people could smell it yesterday. So wildfire danger increasing through Thursday. This is also Pendleton National Weather Service. This goes for Eastern Oregon as well. So I just wanted to kind of drive home that those points. And strangely enough, the Pendleton National Weather Service all goes all the way up in towards the eastern Washington, the east slopes of the Cascades here with their uh, National Weather Service office. And also the uh, National Weather Service Missoula online weather spotter talk. You don't have to be in this area to do it. You can just you know scan this code there. Uh, Thursday, October 2nd, increase your weather knowledge. Now, a daily two meter max temperature. Here we go for today. Another very nice day across the region for some areas if you're not dealing with smoke anyway. And you can see, well, Lama Valley, pretty hot. I mean, Medford, 98 degrees, some upper 80s out there as well. Seattle, nice and comfortable all the way up into southwest uh, BC. We go through Thursday, Friday, and we cool things down across the region. We go through this weekend, still fairly comfortable, even as we go on and through next week. I mean, the temperatures are, are comfortable, but we're going to get some frontal systems start to move in as we go through this period. You can kind of see temperatures are relatively suppressed here across a lot of the area. Now, a wider view of things here and a look at the extended forecast, artificial intelligence on the left versus the GFS, the global forecast system, USA model on the right. We deal with that system on Thursday, kind of moving through their week system, but then some stronger stuff starts to arrive as we go on in through the weekend and towards the early portion of next week. Pretty good model agreement really on this trough and its position. Overall speaking, when we go to 132 hours, you're going to see these differences no matter what. But yeah, definitely some precipitation probably returning as we go through next week. Again, we'll be nailing down some of the details here. We could even have some blustery periods in here as well. And then we scroll on in through the extent of Forecast kind of keeps that troughing around in both models as we go over 200 hours. And then you can see we start to diverge, but both models actually show some kind of a ridge as we go through early October. Maybe we'll get some nice weather through the first week of early October, a few nice days. I would definitely take that. Now, artificial intelligence on the ensemble mean, what I want to show you here is just going out about 150 hours. Very good agreement with this trough setting up shop here right off our coastal waters. And you can kind of see this is the same thing here, 500 millibar heights. So this is Quileute, Northwest Washington coastline. So you can see how these really falling off as we go on in through the end of September there with that trough approaching. These are 850 millibar temperatures. Don't pay too much attention to that. The air aloft isn't that cold where we have to worry about that too much just yet at this time of year. Now we got a really wide view of things here there's the hawaiian islands there's north america to the upper right you got asia to the upper left there's australia to the bottom left and if we look here you can kind of see these typhoons out here these are big players in our weather in the pacific northwest as they put this heat transfer process into the jet stream uh, you know you get these troughs and ridges it's going to really amplify some of these ridges and troughs which can affect uh, downstream conditions here in the pacific northwest i put that back in motion you can kind of see some of the moisture of that then this tropical or system gets caught back up in the westerlies there and then starts to come downstream towards the west coast of north america so uh, yeah as we go through the fall months definitely these uh, typhoons out here and these tropical systems have big implications on what happens here in the Pacific Northwest. And if we look at the corresponding jet stream at about 39,000 feet, again, same map, Pacific Northwest and North America up to the upper right. And there's Asia over here. If I put this into motion, you can really see the trough that is approaching as we go on into the early portion of next week that will definitely give us a big pattern change, the trough axis right off the West Coast of North America. Now, uh, artificial intelligence ensemble mean precipitation. As we go through Saturday there, it starts to bring some down into Western Washington, much bigger amounts across Western BC as 
I mentioned. And then we start to pivot that trough closer and look at some of these amounts starting to look a little bit impressive here as we go on in towards the end of next week. So yeah, definitely enjoy uh, this nice weather in the meantime, because things likely to change. And over the next 46 days, you can clearly see the trend. I mean, there should be no surprise. You, everybody knows we're at the end of September and we're headed towards October and then eventually November, which is really uh, for many portions of the Pacific Northwest, the rainiest time of the year. And you can clearly see the downward trend these days up into the 70s and this nice weather is going to be a distant memory here eventually. And you can see the same thing, Eugene, that downward trend. There's Pendleton. We go to Spokane. And again, you can kind of see things really cooling off as we go over the next month or so. There's Kamloops, Interior British Columbia. Downward trend starts. And there's the Boise uh, international airport there as well and also with the rainfall i mean if i go out 46 days into early november you can clearly see that rainfall is definitely going to be upticking as we go on in through the month of october towards november there's a vancouver island a lot of rainfall of course six to ten day temperature outlook above normal on the west coast there's the above normal signature don't disagree with that uh, through the six to ten day and the eight to fourteen day Looks like the entire lower 48 and the entire Hawaiian Islands are above normal. And then again, that signal for above normal precipitation. So check out the Patreon page if you like as well. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.